Testing, yeah. Oh. Put on your ears. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, all right.
All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome uh, to uh, our Friday session uh, for uh, for the May uh, State Board meeting. And uh, I'd be uh, remiss if I did not uh, recognize Mother's Day uh, in two days. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and grandmothers and others who play that role uh, in uh, in the room. Um, we have uh, some short, uh, short day of reports, um, uh, but uh, uh, some good information uh, to get out. Uh, to us and, and to others today. And so we're going to start with uh, Dr. Hernandez, and we have a couple of more uh, co op evaluations. Um, Mike, are these the last, last two we should expect, or is there no, a few more next uh, month? These are uh, numbers 11 and 12. We'll have 13, 14, and 15 uh, next month. And so these. Um, these two were um, Southeast Co-op and Wilbur Mills, and so just a you know a couple things I want to want to say that I, I thought these two co-ops that we're doing were kind of neat and seeing a lot of this this type of work across the state. Um, you know, one on Southeast side that they've really uh, embraced the thought of of doing things with finance and helping their member districts with finance. So they, out of their local funds, have have hired a financial advisor that works with all their member districts free of charge, but they also go, he also goes out and works with other districts across the state. Um, in Wilbur Mills, one of the things that they identified was a struggle with math curriculum. And so what they, they did is, is, I don't know if a lot of you know uh, Dr. Linda Griffith that, that worked at UCA, she's actually one of my professors. Um, they have been working a contract with her to help member districts develop math curriculum. That way it can, you know, live on past just the teachers leaving and things like that. So, you know, co-ops are trying to be responsive to those types of things. But we do have, uh, we are completed. We have finished all 15 co-op evaluations and those final three will come um, next month. And we have a plan next week to get together with uh, the team and start to identify what, what did we see things that went well, what are things that we need to modify, and then also start to bring in the department uh, folks and the co-op uh, directors and TCCs to talk through what they feel like the process should be going forward. And that may look like every three uh, every year doing three different co-ops that way it's on a, a cycle as opposed to waiting uh, like we did this time and doing all 15 in one year which was fun but it was it was a it was a trek so is there anything in particular that you would like to draw our attention to with with the process in general or a co-op in particular uh, you know, so far the the ones thing that we've we've seen a lot of is just a lot of variation in the responses around you know needs assessment type questions and then also user satisfaction, and so you know we've talked to co-ops a lot and we've already seen a, a big uptick in the amount of responses. Some that may have had really low responses last year with the new year of having a a new tool and survey thing, and then uh, overall. Uh, getting that information and bring it to the level of the board where the superintendents of that co-op know this is important. So we've seen things that have gone from, you know, 100 responses up to 1,000 responses already for this year when they're doing their surveys and asking questions. So that, that's probably a big part that, um, you know, we feel like it's very important because they need to know what their member districts need or they're including all members of their um, and doing more of a, um, not necessarily just the, the anecdotal, hey, I need this or I need that, but actually have something that, that's written that they can track and make sure needs are being met. And they do a good job of that, but you know, it, sometimes when we're doing the evaluation, it's, we're, we're looking for evidence of those things and it's hard to capture a conversation. Thank you. Any additional questions over here? All right, all right, thank you. We look forward to a couple more next month. Um, all right, um, Ms. Cochran, you are up with our Teacher of the Year report. Good morning. morning. So this month, stop on our journey to educational equity is well-rounded education. And I'm sure, of course, you all know that I'm a Spanish teacher, and I'm sure you know all of the 
um, benefits that are touted of foreign language instruction and um, being multilingual, um, the test scores, the critical thinking skills, all of the, the amazing benefits of, of being multilingual. So today, I want to, I've brought with me Miss Jenny Kilgore, and uh, she is the president of the Arkansas Foreign Language Teachers Association. A couple of years ago, I was named, along with a colleague of mine, Will Davis, to the advocacy committee of the of AFLTA, Arkansas Foreign Language Teachers Association. And they told us, you have one goal, and that is to develop and make official a state seal of biliteracy. And fortunately, we were very young and naive and had no idea what we were doing, so we forged ahead and we learned a whole lot from our national organization, and we reached out to ArcTSOL to um, form an, a joint biliteracy award for the state of Arkansas. And so what Ms. Kilgore is gonna do is she's gonna explain what that is. And, and last year you met some of our um, uh, students who had received that award, and she's gonna tell you all of the incredible things that have happened in our state since I started my year of service, really. So, Ms. Kilgore. Thank you so much, Courtney. So, yes, my name is Jennifer Kilmore. I'm from West Memphis, Arkansas. And I am the president of the Arkansas Foreign Language Teachers Association, and today I'm representing that association and ArcTSOL, the Arkansas Teachers of English to Speakers of Other Languages. And together, these two organizations have been very passionate about establishing an Arkansas seal of biliteracy, as we did not want to be one of the very few states in America that has no process started for a seal. Currently, there are 33 states and the District of Columbia who have established official state seals of biliteracy. What that means is it's a process and um, a form of recognition and award to students who have achieved and proven proficiency in English and at least one other language. That could be modern languages, classical American Sign Language, or Native American languages. In Arkansas, um, we have recognized and awarded seals of biliteracy in Spanish, French, German, Chinese, Japanese, and Portuguese so far. Um, hopefully, many more to come. So just Courtney was um, tasked with establishing the seal in Arkansas, and this joint committee was formed about two and a half years ago. So we've been working for two and a half years doing research, speaking with other states, um, advocacy groups, and national leaders on what that means to establish a seal of biliteracy in a state. And what does that mean for Arkansas? So we've compared kind of our state to similar states and seen what they've done and how they have awarded the seal. And we came up with a set of guidelines and procedures and acceptable pieces of evidence of proficiency, as students do have to prove that proficiency. So um, we started the process and piloted in January of last year, and the first two award recipients received their awards here, and that was May of last year. We piloted with Springdale High School, Harbor High School in Springdale, Fayetteville High School, and Siloam Springs. And those high schools were chosen because they are already in proficiency-oriented classrooms and were producing large numbers of highly proficient students. So we knew we had a base of very deserved recipients there, and they could help us kind of establish what this process was going to be like. Um, in January of 2018, we had our process refined, we made some adjustments, and we opened up to the entire state. So currently, we have awarded 350 awards of seals of biliteracy across the state of Arkansas in German, Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese, Spanish, and French. Um, so these students have taken a, a form of a proficiency test, submitted applications with test scores, and received that award. Um, and it has been as far south as Nashville, Arkansas, and as far east as Searcy, and we're hoping that as we go statewide and communications get out there, that more and more teachers will be interested in how they can recognize their students for proficiency achievement. So proficiency goes far beyond the classroom. Um, it's far beyond test scores and grade point averages. As Arkansas becomes more and more biliterate, there's a more increased need 
for biliterate workers in police forces, healthcare, the schools, legal aids, and also all of the businesses in Arkansas who have parent companies in other countries or Arkansas established businesses that serve other countries and have workers. So we have seen the need in an increase in online job postings um, for bilingual workers over the last 10 years. It's increased about 98%. Um, so we definitely see the need in Arkansas, and we want to recognize those students for achieving those skills so they can bring them back and serve their state. So the Civil Biliteracy really pats them on the back and applauds them for those endeavors and going above and beyond, and then hoping that they'll bring those skills back in and stay in Arkansas and serve our people. So with that, I would like to ask the board to consider establishing an official Arkansas seal of biliteracy um, in the future, that um, as we have set the groundwork and the foundation for what it looks like and how it can kind of work and manifest, uh, we would like to go a step further and ask for endorsement and recognition from the board and then hopefully future establishment of a state seal. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Um, Ms. Reith and Stacy Smith have been working with us to kind of talk about different pathways to an official state seal of biliteracy. So um, if you have any questions, We'd be happy to answer them. And then, like Ms. Kilgore said, um, we would love to, in the future, work with the board to make this official so that all the schools and districts in our state will know that um, this is a very good thing for their students, for the businesses in the community as well, and um, we'll, we'll consider supporting their students in, in um, trying for the seal of eye literacy. So at present, the, the process is that at an individual district level, they make a decision to, to, to place a seal on the, on the diploma. How many districts have made that, that decision? Do you know? Um, I have it written you, down. You gave the list. But I, 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 <laughs> I have a small list on our press release that I can pull up. I actually think it's on my phone. Um, but right now, the districts aren't making the decision. The process has been through the committee. Um, that we are awarding the certificate um, because it's not an official seal districts aren't sure if they have the liberty to do this or what this means which is why we're asking for an official one that would kind of make a collective definition and tell districts this is a good thing this means the same thing across the state um, so mostly right now it is in northwest Arkansas is where we're seeing it that's where most of the communication is um, but I can get you that number. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> okay. But I, I was just trying to get clear on the process. So it really has been a um, th that individual districts have worked with the association to kind of um, uh, develop. Currently, it's at the teacher level more. So as teachers are attending AFLTA functions and advocacy meetings, um, it's really at the teacher level. And districts are becoming aware of this. but. Um, that's where y'all come in, <laughs> is we need more district level um, support um, to support those teachers and students. Okay, all right, questions? Any questions over here? Ms. Wright. Thank you. Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, um, Ms. Agamora. We've been exchanging uh, calls and emails for some time now, and so this is actually our first time meeting in person. And obviously, um, uh, it was through this process that, um, that, amongst others, that I became such a fan of Ms. Cochran, which is why I was not surprised when she became Teacher of the Year, because I'd seen her leadership um, exhibited in many ways. This was just one of the many spaces. Ms. Cochran's offered leadership in a space. So first and foremost, I want to thank both of you ladies uh, on this, and, and for everyone's purposes, my phone has blown up this last month um, to make sure that uh, in, in preparation for this conversation today that we'd be here. And so, um, I, again, um, reaffirming the passion uh, that our teachers have for every student. So I, first and foremost, I just have to thank you both for your leadership. Um, and and um, for our colleagues on the board, then, just as your questions lend itself, Dr. Barth, it, it hasn't been a clear-cut process. So we know that support is there with teachers. We know that um, some superintendents are aware and things like this. And so that's why I'd actually like to invite um, uh, Dr. Smith, Stacy Smith, to come up to, to, to speak because we've been really, um, and again, uh, appreciating the leadership of the department here um, in trying to think about what are, are the options. Um, I've appreciated um, 
uh, the commitment to this, this board has made in so many different ways and making sure our students are college and career ready. And as these ladies have laid out, it's, um, uh, it's an equity issue, but it's also about us fulfilling our broader mission, right, of making sure that um, our children here are competitive, even for the jobs that are here in Arkansas. And we know that whether it's our hospitals up in Northwest Arkansas, who literally call me every week, Mire, I don't have bilingual nurses, right, um, and can't fill spots, or whether it's Walmart that wants um, our students to be able to work on the international platform and needs um, these bilingual individuals. So what, what can we do in a broader sense? And I thought um, uh, Ms. Smith did just such an amazing job of thinking through how this might include in our ESSA process, and I would like you, if you don't mind, to share that with our colleagues. Um, but then otherwise, um, if there is an opportunity here for us to take an action, um, and I, I know uh, you've, you've advised us a little bit about what that might look like, um, uh, Ms. Smith, so if you would speak to that a little, what, what that could look like. But I, I would appreciate um, the leadership of this board for us to, to demonstrate that we are backing our teachers, we're backing our students, and, um, and that we do something proactive in, in before the request that's been made to us today. Stacey Smith. Um, I first heard about this from Trisha Kerr, our ESL director, with, and she works closely with Arkansas TESOL. And one thing I wanted to point out that I, I don't know was said earlier um, about students having to demonstrate to get the seal for biliteracy. It's more than just speaking, okay, and understanding. They're actually having to demonstrate that they can read, write, uh, two languages, but they're reading, writing. I mean, the, the whole, the encompasses all the skills, listening. Um, it's, it's more than just being able to communicate um, orally. So um, when I first heard about it, we started talking about it and thinking in terms of ESSA and what this looks like for us moving forward. Um, we're constantly trying to ask ourselves through the ESSA plan and for students, what are the skills students need to be successful after they graduate from high school? And one of the areas that we've heard lots from the community has been about um, industry certificates or acknowledging certificates, technical certificates, when students can demonstrate or have earned through coursework. Um, and for me, this may fit in that category as we move forward, looking at skills that students can demonstrate where they would show, look, this is, this is a skill that I have acquired and that workforce in Arkansas recognizes it as something um, when they're interviewing kids or looking at resumes. Um, so to, to me, it, it's bigger than just saying this is a skill that can go on a, a diploma. I think that if we need to look beyond just the cell and the diploma, we need to think about how can this actually impact workforce in Arkansas. Um, we've been working with Arkansas Career Education to narrow their industry certificate list down so that hopefully within, I mean, when we go back and read ESSA, that was one of our future indicators about trying to bring in industry credentials within that process. I think this may have a place in that discussion about being able to demonstrate that. I also think with the legislation that was passed this last year um, by um, Rep Representative Douglas about competency and being able to demonstrate proficiency, I think there's areas of conversation there that this could, could fall into. Do I have all the details worked out for you this morning? I don't, okay, I don't. Um, I've just got very excited people um, talking to me about this and I do think that there's a place here. And so as far as a, an actual action by this board, um, I don't know that there is one right now, um, but I, I, I would definitely accept the charge from this board to continue to look into this, um, making sure to pull people together and groups together to discuss how does this fit in, especially with our future plans, Anessa. Um, I, I definitely think it fits. Um, so as far as the, this board recognizing and encouraging the department to encourage districts to recognize the seal. Um, now, right now, they're submitting their demonstration to your, the AFTL, is it, is it AFLTA group, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. So if we get to a point where we actually can tie this into our ESSA plan, then we'll have to have a more formal process and formal documentation process so that it can count within the plan. So therefore, um, those take some time to work out. That, that some um, systems pieces with Dr. Saunders' group, um, how do we start collecting that information and that da data to verify? Um, so there's some pieces there to think about as we go through, but I definitely think it is a worthy thing for this board to um, say this is something that we would support. Great, any further comments? Ms. Hook? 
put it on the action agenda and, and discuss and, and say, we like this, we hope you do. If you do, put it on it, or is it a matter of saying, if, you, if this child, student, qualifies, you will put it on there? Well, I think what I was hearing um, from, from Ms. Smith is, is some commitment to continue this, okay. this work, tr figuring out the right pathway. Um, obviously, we can't take any action today, no. but um, you know, I, it does sound like it could be appropriate for us to um, consider a resolution to, in, to endorse movement in that direction right. and uh, in, uh, in, in the future. come up with, like, it's not a, a big expense, but then, you know, the, send out the seals to them to take off and put on the diploma, or will it be like a stamp kind of seal or yeah. some way to acknowledge it? Is that? I think that would be several, several steps down the, the way, but. So many different states have different ways that they've implemented this, and we've looked at every single one of them. <laughs> so in the event that, you know, if you wanted more details on what that could look like and kind of choose a direction for how it's delivered or the process through the state, it is done in 33 different ways. <laughs> so there's a lot of different um, areas or angles to come in from. Pfeffer reminded me of something that we had talked about before too. Um, as we continue this conversation on um, high school pathways and looking at um, conversation of where we're heading with you know graduation and um, students being prepared and ready, the idea that this could lead to a pathway and this would be that credential in the end that you're actually getting and so you're working towards that and this is something that students when they're talking about their student success plans in eighth grade with their teachers um, this is something they're planning for so i i definitely think um, there is room for this um, and part of the workforce in our in our state so just another thing miss newton dr worth I, I can see this becoming much more than just a seal and so, so I, I would really rather us not rush into it. I would rather us to get um, Ms. Smith and her department to look into it and, and see you know, how we can develop it and, and really make it into something uh, that, you know, uh, that would ha really have some weight to it, you know, the like the industry certification, that sort of thing. And so, you know, if, if um, my daddy always says, when you get into a bigger hurry, sometimes you make mistakes. And so, so uh, you know, I, I would like to take our time and make sure that we develop that pathway and we, we uh, do the best good for, for our students. And so I, I can see it becoming something bigger than just a seal is what, what I guess I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, thank you. And thank you for that, Ms. Newton and, and Ms. Smith as well for that additional thinking on that. And, um, and I, 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 having, again, only briefly worked with Ms. Kenmore and more with Ms. Cochran, I have to imagine um, Applin Arctisol would not mind seeing this being even bigger than, than just a seal. Um, but at the same time, I, I do want to make sure that we don't lose the opportunity to give visibility to this issue now and encourage districts to be thinking about this while we on our end vis-a-vis -vis ESSA, right, create a pathway and I'm just wondering so that um, these women as well can feel right um, that um, that their time today had an impact um, if as part of our recognitions for next month if we could once again invite some of the students back um, maybe some sort of conversation you know when we have press here and you know through um, the visibility that our action agenda gets that um, we um, highlight this so that districts can be thinking about this for next year superintendents can be encouraged that we can also be able to communicate back uh, to the broader public that we are working through a process so where um, so that so that people know that this exists right and that um, that that we're making a commitment to, to working on it um, I'm open to other ideas of what that would look like that's one that just emerged but I know um, I'm going to be at the graduation um, this coming Tuesday in Springdale for several of these students. I was just informed yesterday um, uh, that um, I'll be uh, handing out the diplomas this year, uh, which I'm really excited about. And so maybe there's some opportunity to ask some of them to come down again as part of our recognitions and continue to give visibility and, and affirmation of, of our support. But again, Ms. Smith and others, I'm, I'm open to suggestions on what that looks like. One thing I want to note is um, we're on board as far as where this is heading. Um, and I do think there are things and actions that we can do as Learning Services Division to support this now 
for example, letting schools know about the opportunity right now to submit. Um, there are times that we have, you know, w working with other organizations, put out information to schools right now to say, hey, in case you didn't know about this, and not put all that on their shoulders to make sure schools know about it. So we can send out information directly to schools, letting schools know about this, um, get, how, getting them information about how to prepare a student to submit their information and their work. So there are th there are those are things right now that learning services um, can immediately begin doing that don't require necessarily an action from this board. Okay. So did you any did you have a comment? Okay. So where, where I'm just to tie this up, um, I, what I'm hearing is that um, next month, uh, trying to identify some way to um, continue the visibility of of this issue and and this possibility. Um, secondly, the commitment from the department to continue examining more formal um, formal a um, formal action in the future that would. Um, you know, more un make this more universal, create some consistency across the state, et cetera, work in collaboration with the existing associations, and that at a time in the future, that may that could lead to a need for action from this board, uh, but that that is not the immediate step. Is that the is that kind of where things? Does that sound like a good conclusion, Ms. Wright? If I could just ask one follow-up question. Thank you, Dr. Barth. I know this has been a complex process, as it has been for all of us, in trying to figure out what exactly we're asking and what would be most helpful at this time. I'm just wondering, Ms. Smith, if it would be helpful at all for us to be able to indicate um, or take an action of this being part of our upcoming, you know, ESSA process, if that's it, something that needs affirmation at our level, if that would support you in this effort, or is that duplicitous because of your already stated commitment to look into it? Yeah, and, and, and this is where I would probably with either the attorneys or Commissioner Key, I don't, so we, we take our charge when you guys ask us to investigate or look in things or to, um, you know, do some research, um, we take that seriously. And that's what I'm hearing today from this board, that this is something that you support. Um, that this is something that you would like us to, to dig into and look at. I know that this is something that um, Trisha Kerr with my, with that unit has worked with and is, is passionate about and feels like this is something we need to work on. Um, as far as um, within the work within, with ESSA um, and, and those continuous conversations, um, I, th I think today through th our minute, I mean, I, I'm not sure what the charge needs to be. I don't know that there's an a there's no there's not an action right now to say we're going to make this a seal for the Arkansas Department of Ed because we don't have a process for that today. But or, or, to give me the charge to go and um, continue to look at this so that I can bring something back to you, I think that's what I that's what I have heard um, today. Yes, sir. Well, and, and as it relates to ESSA, we just have to keep in mind that any of those components have to be. Accessible to. across all uh, all districts, um, comparable, you know. All, all. So, if that is something that may be a future, um, uh, you know, it, right now it's not available to all students in all districts. So, before it could be included in ESSA, it, it would have to become available to all students in all districts. So, um, that that would be a consideration on the ESSA work. However, as it relates to the broader work of continuous cycle of inquiry for schools, which is um, the broader goal of our ESSA plan. It certainly fits into what we would want them to do for well-rounded, um, prepared students. And that's something that we would definitely want to encourage and um, um, nudge our schools to be looking at. And, and for us to begin to figure out how do we do start doing this as a data collection piece and how do we make it for all schools so that we can submit it as something like that. Okay. All right. So uh, more likely next month in terms of awareness, um, more in the future in terms of something that may would be a more formal uh, movement. Is everybody comfortable with where we are? Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much for driving over uh, this morning. Uh, okay. Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, Dr. Dr. Chairman, <laughs> <laughs> uh, may I uh, ask uh, <laughs> Ms. Cochran a question before she sits down? Does the uh, Former teachers of the year and the current ones, do y'all have like an organization? I've been thinking more and more about 
uh, the need for mentors <coughs> in lots of districts where they may not either have someone who's ready to mentor or they've got more people needing mentor mentoring than they do is there some way we could do like maybe work with dr saunders on some sort of like call out to teachers across the state are you willing to mentor devote a little bit of time each week uh, by phone or skype or however they choose to do it or share your ideas uh, to see if we is that something you all can take a lead in, or is that we, something that we yes. need to just work with uh, Dr. Uh, Saunders? Along, along with the Milken Award winners, um, the Arkansas Teachers of the Year have an organization, the Arkansas Excellent Educators Network, and Ms. Abels is in charge of that. So she could probably, I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah. Well, good morning. Yes, we have a group called the um, Arkansas Exemplary Educators Network. And currently, we meet with the commissioner um, twice a year to talk about what's going on in the agency, education in general in Arkansas, and really just kind of give um, those teachers a voice at the table to represent all teachers around the state. And it's important that they know what's going on at the agency. So around the state, as conversations come up, they can say, oh, well, if you didn't know, at the agency, they're working on this. And so... Um, I would love to sit down and visit with you about some ideas that you have. Um, as I finish my first year in this position, I am trying to evaluate what's working and what's not, what we can do differently to better utilize that group. So I would love to sit down and visit with you about that. Okay. Well, I really don't have any more other than what I said, which was just a list of, you know, here are the first grade teachers, the kindergarten teachers, the fifth grade, the science teachers, whatever, the bilingual teachers, and here are, here are the names of some people you can contact for a mentor, or, or the principal can say, I'm going to find you a mentor in, uh, you know, Melbourne's a great district. They've got a terrific teacher there. I've got a first-year teacher over in ICC, and that way they can be mentored and uh, not necessarily by someone who's in their own building. Right. but just mentored in general and uh, I don't I don't want to make it like a big complicated thing just quick easy access that we make the principals and superintendents aware of Dr. Owen, well, and, you know we do have the teacher leader advisory group and I feel like this might be a great opportunity to kind of put all of these teacher leaders together and maybe feature them through our website what their strengths are and, and really utilize those teachers in a, in a bigger way I, I don't know if you were watching yesterday, but um, Dollar Way was, she was talking about funding, and I was going to go, well, most really good teachers are willing to do, like from a different district, they don't have to get money for it, they just, you know, you get a lot of things in life are just self-satisfaction, so, and you don't have to sign up if you don't want to, you know, be self-satisfied, but uh, it just seems like something now that we have uh, this my student, my child, and so much good that Dr. Saunders' department has done that uh, I just thought, hey, you know, maybe here's another opportunity. Uh, what do you think, Dr. Owa? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jeremy Owa, uh, Educator Effectiveness. The model that you're speaking of is the uh, exact model that the co-ops, uh, with the new mentoring program we have in the regional co-ops, they are uh, setting up mentor mentoring for three years for novice teachers, but they're utilizing their year two, year three, and teacher leaders, as Megan just mentioned, to mentor these first year teachers. And so, and it's not just, uh, with this current model, it's just not teachers mentoring uh, teachers who are in their school or in their districts, but more of on a regional basis. And so, uh, we've started that process and have received positive feedback from uh, co-ops now, and especially, uh, more specifically, from uh, first year teachers about the, how uh, beneficial it's been, and of course, principals have st stated that they feel like this mentoring model uh, is more proactive than the one-on-one -on -one, uh, that we've had in the past. So there's nothing new under the sun, right? So oh, we'll continue to move okay. forward and uh, support uh, teachers, both yeah. new and practicing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ms. Zook, I wanted to add one more thing. Um, there are teachers that are getting approval from their district 
for professional development to go visit other teachers' classroom and other um, areas of the state and to go spend the day and learn from them and tour their school and see what they're doing. And I just think that's a really innovative and a good way to network and learn. So I wanted to just share that as well. So. Of course, you know me. I don't want the teacher to ever be out of her classroom. So yeah, I I'd, some of this I'd like to see done online, not, not yes, with necessary visit and a substitute and all the things that involve. So thank, thank you. you. I, w I will I'll push back a little bit on that. I mean, there are, there are times when being away from the, the benefits of, of being away from the classroom can be great, and especially if it is it targeted at a kind of professional development that really is going to have long-term payoff. I, I think we, we, we probably agree that, it, that, that Everything in all things life. are not equal, yes, yes. And, 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 and that's what I do like about some of the shifts and how we're, what, what teachers can get credit for in terms of professional development, things that are much more individualized to their needs. Uh, and I think that's the, kind of, the best kind of professional development based on my own uh, And I think experience. that's where uh, the department, uh, the board, the legislature, I think everybody has slowly sometimes moved in that direction. Like, it, we're not just going to have PD to have PD. We're not just going to check right. the box. Right. So, yes, I agree. Indeed. All right. Anything else? Uh, thank you, Ms. Cochran. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Ms. Reif for, um, and, and Ms. Smith and everybody else. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Chair's report. Um, I don't have anything specific except to um, just kind of highlight that as we think about the start of a new year uh, on the board, uh, it's time to, I think, begin thinking about what initiatives might be want, we might want as a focus of our work. Uh, next year, obviously, uh, we're, we're continuing uh, on student discipline issues, and I think that's going to continue. But uh, but that is a good example of something that uh, that has been an investment of of energy this year. Obviously, family engagement, which we'll hear about in a minute. But I would urge uh, board members to begin thinking about okay, what are the types of uh, endeavors that really deserve that kind of attention? Uh, you know, ideally culminating in some. Uh, action or new direction uh, from this board at the end of that process, but but I, I would urge us to start thinking about what are those things for next year. And so uh, put your you know in the next uh, um, month or so, put, uh, be be thinking about that. Um, does anybody else have any? Uh, we'll get to the uh, task forces and liaisons in just a second. Does anybody else have any uh, just general more generalized uh, yeah, just, reports? Just some quick information. Um, I was had the opportunity to speak this last month at SAU and was visiting with the president and uh, he told me some really good news and I wanted to share this with uh, Dr. Owen and uh, Dr. Pfeffer. Um, he said in I think it was 2015-2016 they had five applicants to their um, education program. This, pa this spring they have 35. And so uh, I, th I think that's a direct effort of, of the things that y'all are doing in the state and uh, things that Ms. Abels is doing with her, gr her group, just trying to get out good news. And, and so I, I, just, I just wanted to do a happy dance, but uh, I, I just thank y'all for what y'all are doing because it's starting to make a difference. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ms. Newton. All right. Anyone, anything else? Okay. Commissioner, take it away. <clears throat> okay. So uh, I've got three things that I want to uh, to talk to you about. I'll save the news about our students uh, to the end. Um, I passed out, uh, each of you should have a, uh, a packet of materials from Department of Workforce Services. You know, one of the things that Governor Hutchinson has asked his uh, cabinet level agencies to do is to find ways that we can work uh, together more collaboratively. And this is a good example of that. Uh, the, you are all may probably familiar with the TANF uh, program, uh, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, uh, the T program, and that's all managed, operated through uh, Workforce Services, and there's some involvement with DHS, but uh, what we have learned is that there are a lot of these programs that uh, are federally funded um, that can go to help some of our students that are in need, specifically uh, students uh, say that you have a, a a, a single mom uh, that is still a uh, student in high school or or dad for that matter um, that there are programs that go to help these students with the cost of child care with uh, other levels of assistance 
and with the goal being to keep them in school, to uh, get them through, to get them uh, uh, through the high school and then on to a good start. And uh, we've, we've been working with them and um, just wanted you to know and, and take this opportunity to publicize that. And as you, you know, interact with your contacts, uh, this information that's in this packet, uh, we also have links that we will send you uh, that uh, Gina Wendell is working closely with the TANF team uh, with Workforce Services uh, and obviously with her uh, former role as a school counselor, uh, she has a very strong network uh, within the schools of the people who are most likely to interact with students that could use these services. So we're very proud of the, the initial work that's happening. Um, we are putting the uh, the D workforce services folks, the TANF folks, in connection with the co-ops, and I know they've already uh, had a couple co-op presentations. And uh, Christy First, the TANF director there, is uh, or coordinator uh, at workforce services, has told me that she's already started getting some calls from school districts, uh, asking, inquiring more about these services. So uh, th they're. It's, it's not new, that's the thing. It's new, but it's been underutilized because we just haven't done a very good job of getting the word out. Um, but now that, it, and the great thing about it too is it's not just uh, helping serve the students, but then it can extend to serve the families. Um, and what, what their data show is that there are a number of families that need these types of services that for whatever reason aren't availing themselves uh, of them. So. Uh, good uh, partnership between state agencies and uh, would be a benefit to our students and families. It fits right in with our family and community engagement work that we're doing as well. Uh, the next item, I uh, want to ask Lori Freno to come up and uh, Act 781 of 2017 provides us an opportunity to, let me, let me stop there and ask if you have any questions. I almost forgot about that. I was just trying to rush through this. Any questions on the TANF or Workforce Services Partnership? Okay. All right. Act 781. Uh, opportunity to repeal uh, old rules or unnecessary rules. Uh, all state agencies, all boards and commissions have been tasked with the report. And I asked Lori to give you an update on uh, our work there, timelines, and things we may be bringing back to you over the next few months. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lori Freno. Under Act 781, what we have done so far is initially we had to submit by the end of last year a, an initial report that listed all of the rules that the department has with some other information like dates they were enacted and so forth. We did do that in a timely manner. And the next step that we have is by July 1st of 2018, we have to submit a a, um, that, not an initial report, but our final report. And what that is going to include is a list of all of our administrative rules we have, which of them we want to continue to enforce, and which of them we would like to repeal. And the good thing about Act 781 is it will allow us to do a wholesale appeal of repeal of rules. You know, now if we repeal a rule, we have to go through the entire Administrative Procedures Act process. We have to, you know, put it out for public comment. We have to do all this. This is an opportunity to look back, look at old rules that we're really not, we have no reason to enforce anymore, no interest in enforcing, and it will let us go ahead and to have the opportunity to repeal those as a bunch. Now what will happen is, after this report is filed on the 1st of, of July, there, it is going to be assigned to a subject matter interim committee at the General Assembly. And that, that subject matter interim committee will hold public, I mean, they will hold public hearings. You know, ADE will have the opportunity to present. The public will have the opportunity to present. And they will look at this report, look at all the repeals we recommend, and see if they're willing to approve them or not. And if they approve the repeals, the repeals are immediate. We don't have to go through the process of repealing. And so what we plan to do, what we're doing right now at ADE is we're all working together to look through all of our rules. We have a lot of rules, believe it or not. And we're looking through all the rules to determine which of them we think are no longer necessary. And those will be coming to you in a list, a list of rules that we're proposing be repealed in the June meeting. 
so that's that's what you will i mean in the next month that's when you'll receive the list of repeals and there will be folks here ready you know each each repeal will also have a justification so if there are any questions you know certainly we'll be able to answer any of those for you could um in terms of uh, just getting first time i've, uh, I've mm -hmm. been conscious of of how this is going to play out um is it possible when when that list comes that there maybe be some web-based uh, resource where it would be easy to try to hold down the workload on you y'all I mean obviously we don't want to upload all of the old rules but is there some web-based thing where we could easily go and look at the old the rules that y'all are asking for repeal yes I mean, right now on our website, all of our rules that we are enforcing are listed. Now, what we're learning through this process is there are some really old rules out there that we don't even have on our website. You know, just over the years, we hadn't captured them. So you could go right onto our website and look at the majority of the rules, but we can also make sure for any of the other ones that we are going to propose be repealed that we could, I guess we could just, you know, send those the additional ones to you in an email because those are going to have to be loaded on you know uploaded to the report itself so we certainly could provide we could provide it in the form of an email yeah just trying to hold down the workload for y'all but also yeah. allow us easy access to look at them it, mm -hmm. it won't be difficult to to create a hyperlink for you um in an email for the ones that are on the website right. that's right but the ones that aren't you know, it'll probably be an attachment, a scanned attachment or something of that nature. Okay. And so that'll be in the action agenda? That will be in the action agenda for June. Yes, it will. Great. Questions about this process? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And uh, lastly, we, uh, the, just this week, we got notification from the U.S. Department of Education of the Arkansas finalists for the 2018 U.S. Presidential Scholars Program. We had three finalists this year. Uh, John C. Bookout from Hot Springs World Class High School. Uh, did I say his name right, Dr. Hernandez? Pretty close. Okay. Um, the, uh, he's, Dr. Hernandez says he's an amazing saxophone player, too. Uh, Anika Mittal from KIPP. Uh, Blyville Collegiate High School, and Ashley Turner uh, from Maumelle High School. And uh, Ashley was a finalist in um, career technical education. So uh, we continue to get good news uh, of outstanding students, outstanding schools, and I just announced that so uh, you can help us celebrate that, uh, that recognition. And with that, uh, unless there are any questions about anything uh, that I covered or anything that I didn't cover that you want to ask me about, that would be the end of my report. Thank you. All right. Um, and finally, um, we're going to talk about um, uh, committee's appointments, liaisons, et cetera. We'll hold uh, family engagement to the end because you all have a, uh, a separate timeline um, uh, associated with it. Uh, in terms of liaison uh, reports, Ms. Zook, anything on either special education or Office of uh, uh, Public School Accountability? Yes, let me read this to you. And I always want to acknowledge and thank uh, Ms. Kaufman and her team for providing me a written report. Uh, the Public School Accountability Division has been working on the following projects this month. Federal programs on site monitoring documents for all federal programs due to the uh, and it's due into uh, the feds by July 1st. Released commissioner's memo on required methodology for Title I. Uh, Jane Green and Bob Lester spoke at the Arkansas Association of Federal Coordinators Conference in Hot Springs and planning for the committee <coughs> practitioners meeting, which is May the 18th, next week. Under school performance, the public review of the 2018 ESSA School Index Business Rules, which is part of the Commissioner's Memo, public comment period has closed and team, the team will be uh, posting the financial document to the informational documents webpage. The recognition awards spreadsheet submitted to the finance for payment, standards and systems support, 
you all probably didn't know they had all these different <laughs> divisions in, under her. Uh, finalizing the 17 to 18 accreditation reports, appeals, and final approval will be sent to the State Board in June. They're working on SAAS business rules and on-site monitoring document for new standards of accreditation. And the Equity Assistance Center, they completed uh, Garland County desegregation on-site monitoring working on report. I know a lot of, you, most of you probably are aware, but Garland County is the one uh, I think there's seven districts over there who have been uh, denied the opportunity to provide choice because of, uh, and they specifically, even though the other districts you don't get into race, but theirs is purely based on race, so they're trying to get out from under that. And then next ESSA steering committee meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, May the 29th at 9.30 in the ADE auditorium, our newly done auditorium, and I assume that'll be live streamed? Okay, it will be live streamed. So if you wanna watch Ms. Kaufman and Ms. Newton and the team perform, there they'll be. Thank you. All right, nothing on special ed this week? This uh, no, uh, we still don't have a replacement for uh, Ms. Tyler, uh, but that doesn't mean the team isn't working diligently every day and being very responsive and helpful. All right, great. Um, Ms. Newton, anything else on, that was the, that was the ESSA, that was the ESSA story, all right. Um, NASB, anything? Just the upcoming meeting is really for a new member, a new member institute, but we, that's irrelevant for us at the moment. Um, and um, I, I, it's obviously, we're, we do need to think about NASB liaison uh, moving forward, so I'll, I'll probably uh, via, um, uh, via, Kalisha been be reaching out to folks to see who might be willing to serve in that role. Okay. The, uh, the only yeah. thing I'll, I'll add to that, just for whoever uh, does take on the role, um, I'll, I'll be closing out over the course of this month uh, the grant reports um, for our deeper learning grant, uh, just to make sure that the new liaison um, could feel confident that we close that grant in good faith. Um, but I am going to have a conversation with NAS about the possibility of maybe some future grants tied to the family engagement work. Um, and I'll bring that and discuss that in more detail. Um, as it's related to the Family Engagement Task Force report. Thank you, Mr. Great. Chair. Awesome, great. A um, couple of things on my front. Um, I, it's not on the list, but one uh, uh, liaison role I continue to play uh, from time to time is related to, to the implementation of our new state science standards. And um, I am part of the team uh, that uh, the working group um, for advancing uh, coherent and equitable systems of science education, which is a multi-state grant uh, to uh, implement our uh, new science standards in an equitable fashion. And this uh, working group is uh, a lot of folks from business, uh, higher ed, and then of course education folks led by uh, the science team uh, at the department. Um, and you know, this, uh, the mission of this grant is really that, you know, that STEM education has so long, for so long, really been the domain of certain kids. Uh, that uh, that uh, kid, uh, students of color have too, too often been left out of, of uh, science education. Um, women, obviously, uh, too often uh, left out of, of science education. Uh, English language learners often uh, left out. And other folks who have, who have not been thought to uh, be uh, ready to excel at STEM. And so this goal, the goal of this grant is really to say, you know, um, there's a rightful presence for all students uh, across, uh, across groups uh, when it comes to uh, STEM education and performance. And so we met on Wednesday of this week, um, our uh, quarterly meeting, um, and um, interesting, very interesting meeting um, uh, in a couple of ways. Um, a lot of conversation about how formative assessments really can be tools to uh, to ensure equity by by for st teachers to really uh, recognize uh, where the gaps are in a classroom before the end of the year exams, but really using those formative uh, assessments to uh, equalize the playing fields. Um, lots of conversation too at this meeting about the ways in which uh, we can use uh, the culture cultural aspects of, um, of different groups to really promote, um, to promote uh, science education. So for instance, um, lots of opportunities when it comes to food culture within different 
uh, communities to really think about the connection between that and health and other aspects of of science, really being conscious of embracing those culture that, that those forms of cultural diversity rather than treating it in a in a different light. Um, in Arkansas, that that also might mean uh, kind of a celebration of of rural agricultural culture and and really thinking about the ways in which uh, the way in which our Kansans in so much of the state are so tied to the land to really use that to think about uh, 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 issues related to science. Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, what's also um, popping up is um, continued resistance uh, to implementation of, of the science standards, particularly at the elementary level, um, but where there was very little science content historically. Uh, and this is a big culture shift for uh, teachers at the elementary level. Um, and um, there are certainly schools where um, the um, materials are not always present for teachers to use to, to do that well because uh, the new state science centers are really about uh, discovery rather than just delivery of content. And that often takes um, um, manipulatables and other uh, devices that may not be present. So there are some challenges that are really showing themselves, especially in the youngest grades. Um, I think we're going to need to be conscious of that uh, moving forward and supportive of the science team to be sure that that uh, professional development work uh, can continue uh, so that uh, so that kids get a uh, of all kids get a good start in science education so it really pays off uh, later on so that's a those are some thoughts on uh, science education um, my other report today uh, relates to forward um, and um, uh, several things on the forward front this month. Uh, I mentioned last week, or last month, excuse me, the Forward Together conversations, uh, which are really um, dinners, um, uh, coffees, uh, house parties around the state, uh, really focused on what our Kansans want to see in, uh, in public education. Um, there are 16 of those conversations going on around, uh, around the uh, uh, around the state in each of the five forward communities. I uh, really appreciate, I know Ms. Sook is going, I think, uh, Ms. Wright, are you, Ms. Sook, are you going? Uh, uh, yes, we've been invited to come up for the, I P. Ridge. P. R I think P. Ridge. Are you in P. Ridge? Uh, I'm You're somewhere. <laughs> You're going somewhere. Uh, I, I know Ms. Chambers is, is also going, Ms. Wright. Uh, so I appreciate those of you all who are participating uh, in those. Three of those have taken place. Thirteen more will take place next week. Um, so there will be um, a whole array of, uh, of conversations going on, and I think that's uh, important. Um, Forward is continuing to do work in all three of the districts that are under state control. We saw yesterday in Earl's report uh, the, uh, the work with Forward there. Uh, uh, work ongoing in dollar way, especially in collaboration with some of the other partner organizations. Um, and then here in, in the Little Rock District, um, the, uh, at, the, at the middle school level, uh, the real focus on community partnerships with bu the business, between the business community uh, and those, uh, those middle schools. And so uh, that is uh, important forward work as well. Uh, forward, as you uh, as we'll hear in just a second, has been supporting the Task Force on Family Engagement and Learning, um, and, uh, and, and that's, that's been a, a, a focus of work uh, in the past, um, and then also supportive of the Task Force on Student, uh, student Discipline uh, and, and there, and so trying to uh, c uh, support our work uh, in those initiatives. So uh, th those are the highlights on the forward front. I will try to have a more, um, I was, this was mainly through a phone call this month, and I want to sit down and really have a face-to-face -face and have a more uh, full uh, report from, from forward next month about it, where it is now and what its future is. So good? Questions? Ms. Hook? I have a question sort of that will tie into your science, but also, uh, when uh, Ms. Kaufman, when standards, uh, I know it calls something new now, but anyway, when, when they go out and they look, do they check about, the, the, like, do they have the science equipment they need to do this? Are they teaching cursive and, you know, do all these different laws that have been passed that we encouraging and wanting and the districts to implement? Uh, is that one of the things they, uh, in the newly designed, up-to-date standards? Standards for accreditation. Standards for accreditation. Thank you. Um, we are in the process right now of developing our monitoring tool, and that monitoring tool will detail 
all of the things that we will be looking for. Okay, right. So, and we'll make that public. We're just in the very, very rough draft well, no, stages of doing that right now. And um, of course, those rules have not been finalized, but we're working in the hopes that those will be finalized soon. Is that one of the ones we sent on on emergency rules? No. Okay. They're out for public comment until May 15th, and then they will um, then we'll assess to see if there are any significant changes or not. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair. Sure. Um, <clears throat> student discipline. Um, we had a Miss Lamb, Lori Lamb, will be submitting our recommendations to uh, next week on, I mean, next month on the steps that we're going to use going forward, the recommendation to the legislative committee to move forward. And, um, I think we put those in the concise formats that we can bring back to the boards and what initiatives we're going to take to move forward to put those action items in place as you ask. And so she called in yesterday and so she'll draft that report, get that to Doug and we'll have that ready to submit in the next on the, ne the next board meeting. Okay. So will that will that be on the action agenda next month? Is that the expectation of where I don't know the commissioner how will is there action? On, it, yeah, it depends on the recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, which we will look at from a draft form from her. Okay. So we're just trying to get some concrete information on what I, action I've based on the last few meetings, and then we'll decide how we'll proceed with that. Okay. All right. So we'll see that on the agenda yeah. in some format some uh, form. next month. Those will come to the board as, as recommendation. Okay. Great. Look forward to that as well. Great. All right, and um, finally, Task Force on Family Engagement in, in Learning, and um, Ms. Reif, I'll let you speak for the task force. Well, thank you, and um, as I uh, commence with just a few words, I will ask Ms. Abels if she'll come up as well, um, because obviously a lot of this work, um, her and Ms. Wright have been leading so effectively, and I'd uh, love for her to actually present the, the timeline itself. Um, well, uh, the reason um, that I had asked uh, Ms. Abels and Ms. Wright to put together this timeline for you all, um, I know that we've uh, given you glimpses of, of the process thus far and the process of ahead, um, but I know that um, they have as part of the work for CCSSO actually condensed this into um, a, a simplified format, um, one that can help onboard um, a lot of different stakeholders and actors as process of this. And um, it just felt like, especially now that there's a clear vision for what the work of the remainder of this year will look like and even beyond, I'd ask Ms. Abels and Ms. Wright to, to put this together um, so that you all may feel informed as well as the State Board of where this proceeds. Um, I do want to extend an invitation. Um, we will be fine-tuning this next week uh, with our next formal meeting of the Family Engagement Task Force. Um, a slight update from our up from last month uh, when, when we gave you all an update. Um, there are four subcommittees working on this broader coalition of family and community engagement, uh, two of which met prior to our last meeting and now uh, the other two will meet next week. And so we are going to meet again on the margins um, of that specific effort. And so hopefully we'll have even more to share next month. Um, but already kind of catapulting a vision of ahead. Um, since Miss Dean is not here, uh, I'll brag on her um, uh, to also celebrate that she's agreed to chair uh, this task force moving forward. Uh, we felt that's important um, in this moment to make sure that there's a continued commitment by the State Board. And we've been very excited by that. And, um, and whether Dr. Hill knows it or not, Ms. Dean has voluntold him uh, to become part of the task force as well and the various coalitions as a way of also integrating further um, the student discipline work uh, into part of this, acknowledging that um, family and community engagement is a huge piece of being able um, to tackle the issues around discipline. And so Dr. Hill, thank you in advance for your service for that and we look forward uh, to your role in the task force. Um, but I do want to say that even with that transition, there's still more opportunities. So that's the final reason for this timeline a recruitment pitch. Uh, there is more opportunities for more of you as state board members to be involved, uh, whether it is uh, through the subcommittees or the work. Um, I do want to especially highlight next week's um, subcommittee meetings, um, an invitation to any of you to join those, as well as our task force conversation um, on the planning afterward. And then um, please take note in August, there will be regional meetings, just as Ford is doing right now. The Family Engagement Task Force will do there, and opportunities for you all within your community um, to hopefully be able to be part of it, but to also engage other stakeholders and help us engage other stakeholders um, in that process. Um, I've made a longer term commitment to the task force, um, one that 
they haven't rejected, um, and the commissioner has not either, and to which I am grateful for his um, magnanimous gesture of letting me, uh, in my nonprofit role, continue to be able uh, to serve and hopefully offer some contributions um, uh, to the task force itself. Um, but um, uh, I, I do see this as um, um, the initiative that I've been most proud and humbled to be part of since I've been on the state board. And so to the very end, even uh, Ms. Wright has me in June um, at a competition where they'll be lifting up some innovative best practices and I'll be honored to my last act officially on the state board being a judge on that and I can't imagine a more uh, a better way to honor what this experience has meant to be um, but um, I do want to make a final call to action and then turn it over to Miss Abels um, to my colleagues because um, uh, my commitment to this task force, as I know for all of you all and even for the commissioner, is, is beyond just our roles at the state board, but it's about a culture change um, for our communities. And so um, all of our investment toward making this sustainable is, is one that I do think um, is an investment in our broader mission as a department. And so um, I did have some concerns this last month um, in that um, the forward initiative um, due to funding had to cut the participation of Ms. Gina Dick and her consultancy um, to the task force. And then, as you all know, um, the funds that were available for Mr. Montemayor um, from IDRA um, is also transitioning. So uh, Ms. Abels and Ms. Wright are in a fundraising process, uh, one that I've committed for the next month to try and connect them to some donors that can continue to make sure they have the resources and support that they need. Um, and, uh, and NASB ties into that. So that's the loop back on what I was sharing in regards to NASB. But I, uh, Ms. Abels met some donors in Detroit Detroit uh, just this week who are also highly interested and so I hope there's opportunities but I know many of you all know the different foundations and groups that are invested in um, education initiatives and so if there's opportunities here where we can make sure that there's some additional resources uh, for Ms. Abels and Ms. Wright. Um, some challenges have already been identified as well as opportunities um, but some of those tie back to funding and so we welcome the ideas but they have my commitment uh, to help fundraise to the very end and if there's things that um, you all can suggest as part of that broader effort um, as you all are about to see with Ms. Abel's uh, presentation of the timeline um, they have done a tremendous amount of work but there's also a tremendous amount of work ahead right um, and this is just not one of those initiatives um, that can be accomplished in a year time frame or two year time frame there's a longer term projection here um, and I think we have an opportunity to really um, help fulfill what is ESSA vis-a-vis uh, -vis what we are fulfilling for our families and communities as part of that process so Ms. Abels I turn over to you thank you Megan Abels public information manager um, to take you back briefly um, I think we told all of you we're going to um, use uh, four different subcommittees for our state coalition we've really tried to listen to the feedback of our stakeholders and how we they want us to do this process. Um, we kept hearing over and over again, no more than 20 on a coalition. When you have a project of this magnitude, it's hard to only select 20 people to bring you feedback. So we really started looking and we said, we're gonna do four subcommittees and have around 20 people on each of those subcommittees. So um, a couple, well, about a month ago now, we met with our first two subcommittees and really got some great feedback as to moving forward in this process. Um, we originally had planned on having regional meetings in May, and they said no. <laughs> there's baseball, soccer, state tournaments, graduation. There's too much going on. You're not going to have a good turnout. Let's do it in mid to end September early October, that's when we think you should do it. So we listened to what they said and we moved those out to a time when they, they thought it would be best. Um, we also had them sort a lot of, we took other states' frameworks that have already been created around family engagement and had them kind of sort those as to what they liked, what they didn't like, what they think may fit Arkansas, what they thought maybe needed to be reworded to better fit Arkansas. And we have taken those, um, they have been typed out into what they exactly do want, what they're maybe not sure they want, what they do not want. And so after we meet next week with our next two groups, we're going to have tons of things on paper that are sorted to guide us into our next steps. Um, next week we're meeting with our instruction group, which is really going to be based around that core instruction in the classroom 
how you can engage families and communities in that core instruction, and also how we can better instruct parents to build them to capacity in their home and helping them instruct their child at home. So that's going to kind of be that conversation. And then the next day is going to be around culture, and that's the one I really would encourage you to come to. Um, we're going to talk about those so important wraparound services that tie in, Dr. Hill, to that discipline that you've talked about. And we're bringing so many different people to the table that have connections. They're offering after school programs, weekend programs, mental health, physical health, everything you can think of, these people are going to be at the table to tell us how we can provide information on those resources to all of our schools across the state. It's going to be a very meaningful conversation, and I would love for you all to be there and hear that because I think there are so many things going on that we just don't hear about. And if we don't hear about them, you know, some of our teachers are not hearing about them. So I'm really looking forward to that conversation. Um, once we have these four meetings and they're done, we're going to start hosting Zoom sessions to where we pull up and show them this is what you sorted, this is what you told us you wanted in the framework. We want to be very intentional about the language of our framework. We want it to be easy to understand, easy to read. So many times teachers get standards, and I know you all can relate to this, and they're like, I know I'm supposed to teach this, but what exactly does that mean? And we want to be very intentional about our language because at the end of the day, we want parents to be able to look at this, uh, you know, vertically and horizontally and understand, too, what, what, what that looks like from the district level and all the way to the parent. So what, that's, a, that's a conversation that's going to come up via Zoom. What, what wording do you want us to use? How do you want us to format this so that it's easy to follow and easy to use? Um, over the summer, we'll be putting a lot of work in actually typing this out into a draft format. Then once we go into our regional events in September and October, we would like to have somewhat of a draft created to take to our regional events and then ask all stakeholders. We want everyone at the table everyone in the community. Yesterday we spoke and we told those state board, our board members, local board members and superintendents, someone said, well, what do you mean? Who is a stakeholder? And we said, everyone in your community, that's a stakeholder. And so we want to make sure we really tie all of those people in to these regional meetings. And then we want to start talking about our toolkits. Um, it's one thing to give a district and a teacher a list of frameworks and say, here you go, this is to help you. But it's another thing to say, here's this framework, but here are these toolkits that can walk you through step by step how to implement this in your classroom. So there's a tremendous amount of work to be done, but um, we're not alone and we feel that. We value the state board committee that's helping us along the way in so many ways. And, and we value our stakeholders and we are listening to what they're telling us because who knows best, right? And um, we have had an opportunity to partner with some of our CCSSO partners that have um, some Kellogg funding possibility available, and we're going to look into that, which that would be, you know, very helpful moving forward because we don't want to miss any opportunity we can to bring all the right people to the table. And that, you know, honestly, one of our challenges is bringing those parents. And what it, when you go and you ask schools, what are your challenges? It's getting all the parents to come. It's hard for parents to miss work and come to a 9.30 to 2.30 meeting with us. It's hard for them to drive three hours across the state and come. And so we're learning, we're experimenting, we're asking. It's really making us dig deep into those barriers so when we ask schools to do this, we can say we face that same barrier and here's what we did to overcome that. So we're really working on that. By December, um, we'll have a completed product, good Lord willing, um, and we will go back to CCSSO in September and be able to take our draft, see where other states are in the process, get some feedback from them, feedback from our networks there to really make sure we're not missing anything from a national forward-thinking progressive. Um, we want it to be a, a product that's going to last for years, right? We don't want it to be something that's created in three years. It's not timely anymore. So there's a, a lot that goes into that process, and we are working very hard on it. But we do appreciate y'all's support. And 
um, the 16th, please come join us. I think it will be refreshing. I think it will, you will leave like Ms. Newton can testify the day we met with all those stakeholders. You left feeling empowered, encouraged, and just so excited about the buy-in from our stakeholders in Arkansas already who have been wanting something like this. So um, any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Great. Ms. Uh, yes. Okay. So did you all start with a, a measurable goal or vision, or, or is the, are, are these groups establishing the vision? Like, did you tell them, this is what we need, so let's how to get there, or do, are they deciding what we need? Well, we have told them what we know, what we've been told from um, family engagement facilitators and coordinators in our schools, what their missing piece is in order to be successful in their schools. So we're, we're, we're setting them up to tell them what our challenges are. And then we're letting them tell us how to build upon that and address those challenges. So they are really leading the work from the ground up, yes. And if I could elaborate, yes. a lot of what initiated this was the us being one of the pilot states, right, to develop family engagement standards tied to ESSA. So there is an output product that, you know, we've, you know, our state will be amongst those that get to pilot this for, for the nation. And then, um, and then one of the, the first acts of the engagement um, task force was to do a draft mission statement, right? Mm -hmm. What does family and community engagement mean? And, um, and then they're still in the process right now of collecting some feedback, yes. but that's been a really active and revealing process as well by all of the stakeholders where there was an initial mm -hmm. um, effort by uh, the department team to put something tangible down to get some feedback. There's been a really active and inclusive feedback process. So and, and I will say this, um, the first meeting, I felt like people came and they said, well, where is the product? Are we just going to polish it and provide feedback? And we said, there is no product. And then they said, well, what's it going to look like? And we said, that's why you're here. So I think that would better answer your question is, when they're coming, yes, we, we are giving them conversations to have to guide us in what we need, but we are not going to them with something already developed and then asking them to, to tweak it for us. So they are from the ground up creating this framework. So like in a classroom, uh, depending on the students, right. you have to uh, teach the lesson one way to one group and one way to another. So each community will have ev eventually the, the goal or vision mm -hmm. and then how they get there will be individual uh, boards and superintendent decision and teachers. Is yes, ma'am, and, sort of and what you're talking about? one of the very first things we've heard from each group, this has been very consistent, is this framework must be flexible so that each region of the state can make it work for their needs, their communities. Um, and so we're trying to be very intentional about we create it with true guidance, but with flexibility to make it right for your students. So if I, to go back to the, first off, thank you. This yes. is awesome. Um, and uh, um, this is tremendous progress um, over over this period. In terms of, of funding going forward, um, what, I appreciate you reaching out and continuing work, especially with NASB on this. What, what are we envisioning? How much is necessary to see through the process that, that that you guys have um, that's out. that's exactly uh, what the proposal process is right now for for Kim and for Megan um, to identify what the budget is that's tied to that um, at a minimum we, we are hoping um, for some ongoing consulting supports um, so that's one of these these individuals who played these moderator and facilitators and one thing that may or may not have been fully known to the board before it was covering the cost of Gina Dickey as sort of a, a moderator facilitator in this process so that is one of the things that we are looking at um, that uh, the individuals that 
that have helped us get here may continue to be resources to Megan and Kim moving forward. Uh, but then we have brought up things around, you know, when, when we start doing regional meetings, what travel looks like for family members who've already told to us, um, is there a stipend if I have to miss a day of work? Is there a stipend for me to attend a day-long meeting? Is there a gas stipend that gets us there? And right now we've been able to engage, um, so for example, with some Latino parents, you know, my nonprofit was able to fund their gas um, so that they could participate and things like this. And But what, as this goes to scale, we realize that um, the department having access to some resources, right, to ensure, especially like Megan said, parents' voices get to be present here, right, um, and, and acknowledge that there may need to be some resources available to support that. And, and two quick things. We're really trying to model for schools how to do this on a minimal amount of money. Because we, at the end of the day, don't want that to feel like an excuse for some districts not to do it the right way. Um, we have reached out to some districts who said they're going to provide buses for their parents to come to these regional meetings. Um, we're looking for partners, but um, and Ms. Kaufman can speak a little bit more on kind of what we're looking for budget-wise through um, Kim's work there. Kim submitted a budget for $15,000, and that's to cover um, some of our uh, supports that came in, like Ms. Dickey and some of those things that were discontinued from other resources. So she's anticipating about $15,000 a year to get it moving forward. It sounds like the original intent of forward, and y'all have done more in nine or 10 months than, than we have seen as a result, but although uh, I will I will step in uh, forward okay. did support did, did support through Gina. No, I know uh, that so, I understand yeah. they they loaned us a person, but I'm talking about getting it done, getting out there, working the process. So uh, I applaud you for that and the efforts that went into it. Miss mm -hmm. <coughs> Coffin, Dr. Bark, I'd like to just really brag on this young lady mm -hmm. and Kim Wright. Yesterday, our partners, AAEA and the School Board Association, ASBA, invited us to come and present um, and really talk about that system, within the six systems, to really talk about stakeholder engagement and communication. And uh, these ladies fired up school board members who wanted to get up and share what good things they are doing and to network with each other to do more they're excited about going into my school info and learning more about their school, thinking through all six systems of the school. And so uh, I just wanted to share with you, it was, um, it was a really a celebration and our partners were excited and they've invited us to come back and present to future groups. So um, she and Kim just knocked it out of the park. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And, you know, Thanks prior to that. that, we thought we're going to have a tough audience, and, it, and we were the very last session of the day, so they were going to end their day with us. And so we knew we needed to, to bring some energy to the room. And um, we were nervous if people would participate and share things from their district. And these board members and superintendents jumped up and shared, and then when they did, the room would clap. And, and celebrate their success with them, it was, it was really an awesome moment. It really was. So. That's when the spirit that has guided y'all's work all along has really been um, inspirational, and that has really begun to pay off um, in terms of a, a vision, vision for the future. So thank you all so much yeah. for, for yeah, all I your work. I wanted to share one more just beautiful story. Uh, one of the teachers on our coalition went back to her school and said, Guys, we've been doing parental involvement this whole time. The words engagement. What are we going to do different so that we engage? And so they sat down together, their leadership team, and decided they were going to host a May Day for their school. And what they did is they reached out to partners all in their county to come together that offer services during the summer, whether that's library programs, feeding programs, and they had booths set up they had over one-third of their um, school population come with their parents to go to these booths and find out over the summer how their kids can keep learning for free through resources in their community. And then the, the teachers set up booths with activities, projects, learning things they could do at home with their kids in the summer. And so these parents left with packets 
on how to help their kids grow where they didn't have that gap in the summer of no learning. And I just thought, if one meeting did that for that one teacher, where are we going to be in a year from now? And so that was really exciting. So thank you all. All right. Any, any other th things to come before us this month? All right. With that, we are adjourned. We'll see you back in the old haunt in uh, June.